uh, I have a very strong focus on uh, phenomenological uh, and experiential uh, things that are related to our hearing and our vision. In uh, this work called uh, Tree Profiles, um, I'm investigating um, the inherent connection or connectedness between the auditor uh, auditory senses and um, the visual senses. Um, I first started um, many years uh, ago just discovering an oscilloscope and monitoring device for uh, stereo signals and um, I started feeding it uh, electronically um, produced or uh, synthesized sounds, just basic waveforms like squares and sine waves and um, then I got into more uh, functional programming and I was like plotting uh, sine wave functions on the oscilloscope in its uh, XY modus and I just discovered these beautiful uh, little shoe curves and um, uh, this was uh, one, one of the things that really made me curious. So in this, this piece um, we have a sort of a recursive system so um, we have three uh, parallel um, synthesis processes running that do each uh, synthesize their own vector scope and um, the vector scope again is, is like a matrix that is written into and um, this is used for the modulation of uh, the main um, aspects of uh, what is monitored or um, made audible in, which is its amplitude, um, the phase correlation of the two signals and um, its frequencies which in turn get um, remodulated. Um, I, I like to uh, install some sort of a laboratory, it's a test and um, so it's also very important in this case that um, sound as well as visuals get somehow special, uh, specialized so they are in the same space and they are also intrinsically linked to each other it's, it's not, um, none of the elements is, is dominant um, it's, it's neither the, the sound that it's subordinated uh, uh, to the to visual thing, nor it's the uh, visual side which is just an accompanist. It's actually the same thing expressed on two different levels. And um, uh, in this case, this is very uh, important that you see it as, as a, well as a unity and not just a, a, a mixture of different parts.
good experience to be able to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, seeing Burns' uh, three projection thing with with the sound, and uh, because the imagery is all uh, abstract and uh, abstraction of so much modern art is on on the surface, and so these were lines and scratches and kind of graffiti marks and all that. So, on one hand, uh, the sound also a, a lot of it was. Uh, you know, kind of coming out to you, it was flat, it was, you know, scratchy, it was, uh, you know, with various dissonances, you know, in it. But then over a certain amount of time, uh, you get uh, a kind of uh, layering of it and how the sound actually uh, works with uh, middle distance and, and, and depth. And I think that that is what then gave it that dimension, which visually he's not playing with depth and perspective. It's all, as I said, uh, a dynamic thing of, of line and shapes and forms. And that I found very interesting because I've always been interested in that relationship between, between surface and depth and uh, then how it would like seem to kind of enter a point of infinity. I mean, the only point of infinity that came is when he comes to this dot in the center, which, you know, he explained is, is how <coughs> this whole graphics is generated by a, a <coughs> meeting of the vertical and horizontal axis. Uh, so I think that that uh, relationship between uh, a sound being constructed uh, aggressively on the surface, a disturbing sound, uh, to then resonating with with depth, which you could then think, you know, in a very lyrical way or into into infinity.